Hey guys, welcome back to episode 4 of the Flutter Web series. It feels like I haven't made a video in months, but it's actually only been a week. I couldn't make the video last week because I had some client work that I had to take care of. Today we'll be adding our normal provider state management architecture as well as an API integration to get the episodes that we want to list for our courses. You can start off by downloading the starting project from the written tutorial over on fullstacks.com or from the description below. Once you get the starting project, you can open it up in Visual Studio Code. And then I just like to go over the things that I have completed. The main thing that I added was the episodes UI. So if you navigate to the episodes when you run the app, you'll see that we list four episodes with some season details at the top of the episodes view. This data is currently static and you can see it within the episode list. And what we'll do in this tutorial is set up a state management solution and bind our episodes view to a view model and then request the information that you see in the episodes view from an API endpoint. We'll start off by heading to the pubspec YAML file. Then we'll add the new provider architecture package. We'll also add the provider package. Once that's complete, we'll follow the process of removing the duplicate code when passing down data through constructors. We can open up the nav bar item. So you can see we pass in the title, the navigation path and the icon, and we construct a model from that. We pass that model down to the tablet and the mobile UI widget. We can go ahead and remove those constructor parameters and we'll wrap our screen layout in a provider.value constructor call. For the value, we'll pass down the model. Then you can open up the navbar item mobile widget and we'll remove the constructor from the class. And then we'll replace the stateless widget with a provider widget and we'll give it a type navbar item model. What this provider widget allows us to do is get that model within the build function as a build function parameter. We'll add the navbar item model and call it model. Then open up the desktop widget for the navbar item and remove the constructor. We'll replace stateless widget with provider widget. We'll give it a type navbar item model. And then in the build function, we'll add one parameter of type navbar item model and we'll call that model. Then we'll do the same thing for the season details widget. We'll remove the details being passed through the parameters of the desktop and the mobile layouts. Then we'll wrap the screen type layout with a provider.value call. For the value, we'll pass down the details model. Then we can open up the season details desktop widget. We can remove the constructor. We'll replace stateless widget with a provider widget and we'll give it the model season details model. And then we'll update the build function to accept a new parameter of type season details model called details. Head over to the season details mobile file. We'll remove the constructor. We'll replace a stateless widget, give it a type of season details model, and we'll add that new parameter into the build function, same type season details model, and we'll call it details. That's it for removing the duplicate code in the constructors. I will be using this for my responsive UI since you have multiple widgets that require the exact same data or view models. Next up, we'll create a view model for the episodes view since it's currently the only view with any type of business logic. This view will be bound to a view model which will make use of an API class to fetch the episodes list information and then show a busy indicator as well as show the results when it's complete. You can open up the lib folder and under the lib folder create a new folder called view models. Inside the view models folder we'll create a new file called episodes view model. We can create a class called episodes view model that extends a change notifier. Then if you go to the episodes list, you'll see the hard-coded episodes list at the top. We'll cut that out and move that into the episodes view model. And then for the episodes list, we'll add a new constructor that takes in an optional parameter called episodes. We'll create a final property, which will be a list of episode item models, and we'll call it episodes. 
Then in the episodes view, we now have to pass this list down to the episodes list. And that list we'll get from the model itself. So what we'll do is wrap our single child scroll view in the new widget from the provider architecture package. It's called a view model provider and it has two constructors. One is with consumer, which is the one that we'll be using for this one. What this does is when you call notify listeners on your view model, this builder function will rebuild and return to you the new UI to display. Then we can pass in the view model that we'll be using to rebuild our UI from. And this will be an instance of the episodes view model. And then because the Visual Studio Code plugin is being silly, we have to manually import the episodes view model in the imports at the top of the file. We also want to make sure that we provide a type to the view model provider, which will be type episodes view model. Then down by the episodes list, we can now pass the episodes from the model to the episodes list. And if you run this code now, everything should still look the same. We're just checking that it still looks the same so we know nothing is broken. So the point of this tutorial was to get the information you see currently in episodes from an API call. The first thing we'll do is head over to services and create a new file called API. Inside that file, we'll create a new class called API. Head over to the episodes view model and at the top of the view model, create a new final variable called API and we'll retrieve that variable from the locator. Then you can head over to the locator and register the API as a lazy singleton. Then we'll get everything set up to retrieve and expose the episodes property publicly. We'll create a new list of type episode item models. We'll call that episodes and we'll make it private by giving it an underscore. Then we'll also create a get property named episodes that will return that private value. We can go ahead and remove the static data for the episodes. And then we'll create a function that returns a future called get episodes. We will make this function a sync. Then we'll create a new variable called episode results and it will store the result returned from the API call get episodes. The API function will return a list of type episode item model so we can set the episodes directly equal to the episode results. And then we can call notify listeners to rebuild our UI with the newly updated episode values. Head over to the API class and we'll create a new future that returns a type dynamic called get episodes. We know that we'll be using an HTTP call, so we'll add the HTTP package to the pubspec.yaml file. We'll add version 0.12.0 plus 2 and then we'll import that package using an alias as HTTP. The second thing we'll import is dot .convert, which we'll use to convert from JSON to a map. And the last thing we'll import is the episode item model. Then for now, we'll add a static const string called API endpoint, and we'll set that equal to the endpoint in the written tutorial. We'll change that to localhost in a few minutes, so you don't have to copy that now. The first thing we'll do in the get episodes function is create a new variable called response where we'll set that to the value of an HTTP get call. We'll make the function async so that we can use the await. And for the URL we pass to get, we'll start off by giving it the API endpoint, putting another forward slash and then setting course episodes. That endpoint will return a list of JSON matching the ones we had in our app earlier. We'll then check the status code of the response and if it's 200, we will create a new variable called episodes. We'll use the json.decode function and we'll pass in the response body. We'll cast that to a list and then we will map this list using the map function and for each of the episodes, we'll get a dynamic map back, a map with type string and value dynamic and we'll pass that to the episode item model dot from json constructor and that we will call to list on to cast it to a list as well 
And just to show you the response format of the JSON itself, we'll navigate to the URL and you'll see that it's the same format that we had with the episode item models when it was hard-coded values. Now, once we are done with this casting and the conversion, we will return the episodes to the calling function. When the status code of the response is not 200, we will accept that as a failure of the request. What we'll do is return the error message that we want to display within the view model from this call. We'll just return could not fetch the episodes at this time. You can obviously use a different technique where you return your error message within your response and then return that directly. And for any general failures, you return a general message. To handle this in the view model, we will check if the episode result is a string. If it is a string, we'll show the error. Else, we will set the episode's result equal to the episodes that's being returned from the API call. Now in the episodes view, we want to show a busy indicator while the episodes are being fetched. We'll use the null check on the episode itself. If the episode is null, we'll display a circular progress indicator. And if not, we'll display the episodes list. Then the last thing to do is to call the get episodes function. We can add an on model ready callback that will return the model to us. And on that model, we'll call get episodes. This will run as soon as the widget is initialized. Now you can open up the app again in the browser, click on episodes. You should see a busy indicator and then it fails. The reason for the failure is a cause exception, as you can see in the console over here. Now I was going to leave this out of the tutorial, but I'd like you to see what I was dealing with so that you can maybe learn something. And also I need help in solving this problem. I'm not a web developer by default. I can do a lot of web development. I've built professional websites. Um, I use Vue, I use Svelte, but I always struggle with this error. And whenever I Google, I get a different answer on Stack Overflow and only sometimes some of them works. Now, I also have built many serverless API functions and I get this problem, but then I usually solve it by using the cause package and supplying that to the Express app that I use for my API endpoints. This time it didn't want to work and I couldn't get past it. So what we'll do for the end of this tutorial is just serve these functions, which you can find in the Git repo linked below. We'll serve these functions locally and we'll change our API endpoint to point to the local host instead of our hosted function on the full stacks app. You can download the basics functions and you can open up the terminal and then simply do Firebase serve, which will run the API locally under localhost 5000 which is what we'll use to do the requests. You can copy the URL from the terminal where they print out the endpoint location. Then you can open up the API file in the starting project and replace the API endpoint with the localhost 5000 endpoint. If you head back to the app now and you run the code, you should see that your data loads in through a web request. Now there's a few things that usually bother me when people ask me the question, not that it's a bad question, but I just think the perception of how it's implemented is a bit diluted or misconceived, if that's a word. And it's the question of how do I integrate my backend with my Flutter app? And my answer to that is, first off, try to expose your information through an API. That will make it the easiest to integrate. All you have to do is make an HTTP request to the API, get the formatted data back, and then serialize it and pass it down to your application. There's no magic, magical API integration code. It's all just a single API request, serialized, and then passed down to your code. With that said, thank you for watching. I hope this video was worth it. Next up, we'll be tackling more UI stuff for the Flutter web applications.